Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Quite excited to be here today on stage, and this excitement will actually make me confess something. But throughout all my life, I had been running behind a mirage. And I'm going to tell you today why I was running behind this mirage. Society, culture, parents, and friends were the ones who were setting my rules of how should I live life. And the rules were very easy. Just woke up every day, work hard, grind, until you reach this ultimate happiness. The ultimate happiness that will give you all the satisfaction in life. And this is exactly what I did. At that time, I thought I knew what happiness is. But it was actually the definition of the society and not my own belief. Being a person who wants to be accepted by the society, a person who always wants to fit in, the basic thing I did was just grind to make sure that you're there. Just grind to make sure that you reach this ultimate happiness. I was chasing the key of ultimate happiness, not knowing that it's actually a bait. Neglect the haircut. This was part of the pressure and the society's pressure. But during the university years, the society was all around being the good student. The person that is socially active, the person that is always there, accepted in the university. And this is exactly what I did. I grinded to make sure that I'm the good student. I was the person that would sit in the front row, take notes. I'm the person that before the exam, they'll come and take photocopies of my notes. I was the person who ran every possible activity in university. I even reached to the level that I ran for the student union presidential elections, just simply to make sure that I'm there in the front row and make sure that the society is actually seeing me. I have not even thought of if it's something that is giving me this sort of happiness or not. Then finish university, and the first thing that the society pushed me for was find a job right away. You don't have even time to think. You don't have even time to pause and see what is your interest. And this is exactly what I did. CVs were ready. Networks were there. Just every single career fair that you can think of in the country, I went for. And I landed a job just right after university, in a month after I finished university. No pause, no reflection. Then came 2006, and this is the year where the society told me it's the international. Go expose outside of the borders. This ultimate happiness is not within your home country. Go outside. And again, want to make sure that I'm accepted. Exactly this is what I did. My CVs was all well done. I pick up the phone for every headhunter I know, every agency of recruitment. CVs were sent, and I landed a job in Dubai. Again. When you think of it, all this, I was just running behind the mirage. Not one single time I paused and I reflected if this is exactly what I want or is it the society that is pushing me as we go. Then 2012 came. 2012 was all about startup business, being your own boss. Don't think of the corporate world, go outside, explore the real world. And as you might expect it, a person who wants to fit in, what did I do? Yes. I co-founded a startup and I worked with entrepreneurs across all, just making sure that I'm really pushing through in what the trends and the society is putting there. You see, all my life was around trends of the society. My whole life was running behind a mirage, thinking that this is the goal of the ultimate happiness and the ultimate satisfaction in life. I never had the chance to pause and think, is it really reflecting on me or not? I noticed that people, me among them, will always do anything to get this pleasure of happiness. They seek this happiness in any possible way. They seek it in relationships. They seek it in money, in possessions, in medications, in alcohol. Some extremes, it could be even drugs. What people are looking for is just simply this peak of happiness that goes up, but then it's actually dropping from there. So what I had done is I started pausing and reflecting a little bit. But before I tell you what I actually pause and reflect on, let me tell you a bit more on what do I do. My day-to-day -day job is dealing with entrepreneurs and startups. And by default, dealing with entrepreneurs has lots of ambiguity. I deal with lots of chaos, lots of volatility. I deal with lots of meltdowns. And I saw people crying. I cried myself a lot. And at the end, the intensity that you have from this sort of volatility is huge. It just makes you have every single reason 
to quit. You have every single reason to doubt your ability. You have every single reason to even question the happiness that you have day and day. But then one thing I notice that the entrepreneurs that I work with, especially the ones that keep on going, they work on their startup despite their mood. They work out on the startup despite their emotions. Their goal is not actually just simply reaching a certain KPI. Their goal is having the sort of fulfillment and satisfaction throughout the whole journey and the process they're in. And this actually started making me to question one important question, which is the topic of today. Why do they grind? What motivates them to push through while they have every single possible reason to quit? and just simply find an easy, decent, quite relaxed life. And after looking and researching and making sure that I reflected on every single thing, and again, these are the times that I started really looking and reflecting inside and outside to look for it, it just came out to be a very simple thing. They work within their passion. They're not running behind the effect of the mirage. Now, if I stop here, most of you would say, oh, really? This is your breakthrough thing. But to be fair, it's not this. What I actually started noticing is that the breakthrough is not about the passion. The question I always get is, yeah, I know this, but I don't know what is my passion. I'm still looking for it. I'm still digging deep to find it. Now, the thing that I believe in, passion is not something that is hidden inside and miraculously it will come outside. It is not. Passion is a process that you actually work on it. And my talk for you today will simply be, how can you move your interests into passion? It all starts, and it's a very simple formula. Every single entrepreneur who moved to work into his passion followed this formula. It all starts with your interest. Every single one of us here has a certain interest in their day working, sports, reading, music, their family, whatever the interest you have in your day. This, your key role and your key job is not looking for your passion, is having this curiosity to look at these interests. Because these interests are the things that eventually will develop from there. I'll give you a small story. It's an entrepreneur. I work with her. She actually graduated from med school purely scientific med school. She graduated and she started working in the same field she graduated from for five years. While she was in her normal job, which was fine, she actually developed an interest of traveling. And she started traveling on the weekends. She started traveling as frequent as her job and her time does allow her. This interest started giving her a bit more of love and a bit more of enjoyment. It has nothing monetary out of it. It's just purely something that she does and she gets a bit more of a smile on her face while she's doing it. Now what you notice after this, and this is a key part, is she's starting getting recognition and validation from her inner circle. And you would see this across everyone. We as human beings do strive on one thing, recognition and validation. This is why the idea of social media and the thumbs up is one key breakthrough. Because whatever post you put today, literally you wake up in the morning to see how many likes did I get, how many shares, how many comments. Because we strive on these things. Now going back to my friend, what she did was her circle starting asking her about the different travel opinion that she has. And she started giving it through. Now this is where it ignited in her an obsession on traveling. And this obsession started making her to read more, to travel more, to actually reach out more. And this is where she reached to be a topic expert. When she reached a topic expert, the, the people outside of her circle started asking her. She started adding value, not just to the inner circle, but to the outer side. She started feeling that she had a purpose in life. And this purpose moved her into the fulfillment. And the fulfillment is very simple. It's the ultimate part of happiness. It's when someone asks you for something, you give him an idea, 
and then they excel and they come back to you and tell you, I'm grateful for it. Thank you for sharing it. This internal feeling that you have from this, it's something that only people who really experience it get to know. The moment the fulfillment kicks in, and I say kicks in because it just hits you there, your passion for this moves. And this is where you moved your passion into, in, your interest into passion. And notice one thing, the moment it becomes a passion, people will pay you to get your opinion. It becomes a monetary value, and you're easily able to bring it through. Now, one thing that I have to note, say here, these steps, there is no shortcut, unfortunately. You cannot jump a step. But the best thing is if you know the steps that are coming, and you know what to expect, you'll be so much at ease knowing that this is where I'll take my interest into passion. Now, if I leave you with five things that I saw as a commonality between all the entrepreneurs that I worked with that moved their interest into passion. The five things are, one, your mindset. The story you say to yourself. The story you say to yourself could be so powerful because it can either hijack your emotions and your feelings and bring you down, or it can just shoot you up to a level that you would never see this type of energy that you have to excel in your life. Make sure that this story is so compelling to you before then people. Because if it's in you that you feel that I can do it, believe me, you can convince anyone else outside that you can. Number two, the circle of influence. And I call it influence because at the end, you are the sum of the people surrounding you. Make sure you select them very carefully because they are either gonna be bringing you down or you're gonna be running fast and they're gonna be pushing you. I remember during the corporate world, I had excellent colleagues, but our discussions were very simple around the corporate discussions. When I moved into the startup business and entrepreneurship, I had to change my friends into people that are the same interest. So make sure you choose people that are within the same interest to develop you and always push you forward. Three, the belief. There's a very good sentence I truly believe in. Life works for you, not to you. In simple terms, anything that happens, how disaster could be for you, it's happening for a good reason. The only thing is our human capabilities to see the future is not yet there to understand how good could this be. But I always say, have very strong faith from inside that anything that happens to you, anything, is for a very good reason. Four, self-care. I have to confess, moms were right when they said, eat your veggie, sleep well, and exercise. Because truly, this is the machine that is carrying you. This is the temple that is there. Take good care of it. Don't push too much on your body and your mind because at the end, you will need it to run with you as much as possible. Now, the last thing, and this is quite important, and this is why I keep it the last, is cherish the loved ones that are around you. Because these are the ones that are gonna be there when it becomes tough, and believe me, it's gonna come tough going from there. Finally, why do we grind? We grind to develop our passion, not our possession. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Have a lovely evening.